Nip could have taken his money and opened up a store anywhere. Let me just say on behalf of the city of Los Angeles, this is the biggest grand opening of any business anywhere in Southern California today. This was always one of our dreams was to be able to like come inside in this parking lot. We was always outside hustling in the, in the actual lot. And we just, out of just being here for so long, realized that it makes sense to be owners or, you know, have businesses in this parking lot. It was a important intersection. There was a lot of commerce going on. And it made sense like then if we can actually get in here, we'll be able to really elevate what we're trying to do. We saw what's going on on Fairfax, what's going on on Melrose and mm -hmm. Soho and in Japan with their boutiques and just with the shopping experience and the stores and how it adds value to the actual brand. And so we wanted to do something like that in our own space though and just tell our own story and reflect our own opinion on fashion. We know that you are a rapper and it doesn't stop just there. First and foremost, you are an entrepreneur. Right. Why is that important to you? To be a starving artist is uncomfortable, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. even before this, we was hustling so that we wouldn't be blindly chasing a dream with no tangible strategy, you know? I was out here in the streets, feel me? Like, getting in a lot of trouble. Dropped out of school, went to jail, gun cases. I gang bang, feel me? They gave me a job, put me on. Got my parole off my back. It's uh, influencing people for, to do better, you feel me? Because homies, they, they've been on. They came from stretch right here, feel me? They started off selling CDs on the curb. Now look at them, they got three, four, five businesses. Feel me, that's from hard work, dedication. Feel me, so that's what I'm, that's what I'm into, you feel me? It made me less pressure yeah. with the music because I always was able to support myself off my grind. And I was able to take my time and make different business decisions and not be thirsty or be desperate. Yeah. You know, because I was able to balance out my needs with my hustle. Most places, like especially in our community, they don't give you the option of eating healthy. Right. So why was that important to you, to incorporate that into the community? I grew up on hamburgers and pastrami fries and chili fries and just, mm -hmm. you know, regular stuff. We grew up on barbecue, Woody's, Hungry Heroes. We came into a different era getting information. Yeah. You know, you learn about all these things that's going on with the food. Awesome. food. Yeah, you know. Yeah it make it a little harder to, to just not be conscious of it. And then when you start seeing what the other options are, it's nothing around here. For people that ain't got a car, or young dudes that ain't driving yet, women, young girls that ain't driving yet, you know, it should be something close that you can pull up to. So next door from here, we just got the fish market. Okay. And so we about to turn that into a, a little bit more healthy approach to, you know, fish. Okay. I think I'll have some grilled stuff, some rice, some vegetables and stuff. If it wasn't for Nipsey, we wouldn't have nothing around here. For real, all we need is black people that really stick together and make things happen out here in the community. We don't got too many people that want to donate to the community when they get famous. They just think about themselves. Nip and Boss Hog really for the hood and for the family. You feel what I'm saying? They already know they my, they my role models. For that real. Part right there. This is the first smart store in the world. Talk to us about the technology that's included into the store. Every product, every logo on the wall, there's a section where there's art on the wall. Every tag on each product is programmed with content. So there's content on the tags right now. And so once you make a purchase, you know, you take the product home. There's an app you download, mm -hmm. the Marathon Store app, and you can put that actual phone to the tag of the clothes mm -hmm. and the content will stream. What that'll do is, let's say I got a song with a big artist mm -hmm. and instead of giving it to Apple Music or giving it to a streaming site to... You can stream it exclusively in the store. Yeah, I can I can attach it to a product and say mm -hmm. you can get the, the song available three days before it come out officially if you come buy this t-shirt. Mm -hmm. It's streaming off the tag. Mm -hmm. And so after that campaign is over a year later, I can say, hey, anybody that bought the red Crenshaw baseball V-neck, check your tag. It could okay. be in your dirty clothes from you, you bought it a year ago. But I can say, I just, I just uploaded a new piece of content to this shirt. Mm -hmm. And because you bought it, you get it first. It'll come out three days later on all the traditional platforms. Mm -hmm. But as a reciprocation for the support, you get the content first. So I think that's unique. You got a whole wall on that side. It's just, it's just a, a, a logo. 
and that'll be the, the visual wall. So we won't put audio to that wall, we put documentaries or music videos or whatever on the wall. I see you have glass cases with the music in there. Mm -hmm. You know, at stores before, like the FYE and things like that, you got to preview the music. Right. But you did it a little bit different with the app, so right. tell me a little bit about that. That's the proud to pay section of the store, mm -hmm. and what it is is my whole catalog is each CD is propped up in the window, and mm -hmm. again on your app you can put the app to the CD and just get a preview of the music, mm -hmm. and it'll stream directly off the image, and then go to the next one and listen. I think it's a cool feature. It's just interactive with the products. You yeah. can go on iTunes and listen also, but you know to activate the technology yeah. that we have available to us in 2017, I think it's inspiring to walk in here and you know, stream it off to the image. What's next? Because you're already a couple years ahead of everyone else. You know, my focus for the last two years outside mm -hmm. all the business things has really been in the music. Mm -hmm. I've been like buried in the studio just trying to get the album done, get just the music to the next level. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so that's really what I'm focusing on. We getting ready to roll the album out officially. Mm -hmm. um, just make a lot of music announcements mm -hmm. um, and just kick off a real strong music campaign, really. So are we talking Victory Lap? Finally come, yeah, have a yeah, date. Yeah, it's done, it's mastered. Mm -hmm. um, Ali makes and mastered it, you know what I mean? We spent like two months, three months in the studio finishing mm -hmm. it. Um, it's fire. Mm -hmm. It's my first time I mixed the project. Everything yeah. I've done been mixtapes and you know, we go from Pro Tools to the website. Yeah. We don't take it to the big studio and mix and master when it's a mixtape. So to hear the difference in the songs and like in the car and the way it like surrounds you, the music will surround you. Mm -hmm. Like he did his thing. What is the most gratifying part about making music for you? I think when your music inspires you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like if you're hearing it back and it makes you, it gives you a feeling. Like you get goosebumps off it or like you wanna move to it, mm -hmm. you know, or you in the room. And even though it's your song, it's not your bias that's making you react. Yeah. You know, it's the value of the record, like, you know what I'm saying? So that don't always happen. You yeah. know, so when it does, you appreciate that's the goal, you know what I mean? So your fan base is so broad. You know, there are kids who like will have the whole marathon logo and everything on their graduation caps. You're the go-to guy for motivational music. Right. You know, it's not a lot of rappers who do it. We have like the Jay-Z, obviously Jeezy, you're in there in that category. How does it make you feel? For me, I grew up um, off rap music yeah. and like, was fueled from music and was in the field and was getting like jewels from E-40, from Jay, from yeah. like, you know, a person that I know was in the same situation at one point, but figured their way up out of it. So for young dudes that's in, they, in, they, in the paint zone right now, mm -hmm and they hear the music and they use it to like wiggle through, that's the best compliment for me. How important is Destination Crenshaw for you? Man, it's, you know, it's something that I didn't, I didn't kick off, but when they brought it to my attention, mm -hmm. I was like, I need to be involved in that. What they're doing is the train is coming through this area right now. Mm -hmm. And so the whole attention behind Destination Crenshaw is to educate people from our side of the tracks to investment opportunities and the entrepreneurial opportunities that the train creates. So my part in the operation is to explain, number one, the opportunity, mm -hmm. and number two, to kind of like bring my circle of influence to it. I'm from this area, so I just think that it's a win-win. And the, the councilman of the 8th district, that's what our mm -hmm. area is in. Um, Marquise Dawson, he's super involved and just super supportive, you know, mm -hmm. of including me and mm -hmm. just, you know, articulating my value to the rest of the city council. So do you feel like you're speaking for the community? I'm gonna be honest, I think that I've been listening. Mm -hmm. And as I'm hearing, I've been, I've been like trying to see where my understanding can be of value. If you create a place that's like cool and, and it's a vibe and it's safe, you're gonna have that. People are gonna come mm -hmm. show love. And then I think it's a story behind it also. It's, I think it's a movement in the air right now that, you know, we're gonna support each other. Yeah. In business and just in like, enterprise and trying to boss up, everybody getting behind everybody's boss moves. Words of wisdom for an independent artist and future entrepreneur like yourself. As far as the independent side of it, mm -hmm. music independence, I think we gotta look at it like unique solutions for unique problems. I don't think they gotta use the same models back in the day or the mentality of doing it the way that the people before them did it because it's a totally different game. They got mm -hmm. all type of different tools. They gotta look at the game like a blank sheet of paper. 
Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And go at it based on what they see. And that's the best approach. So yeah. picking up the moves and the wisdom of what what took place and what was successful for artists before, but not being made rigid by that and thinking that yeah. I'm gonna do it like this because it's not gonna happen like that in yeah. my opinion. You gonna have to extract the general concept and apply it to the new approach. You know what I mean?